System Philosophy Part 5 Logic Optiman Optiman Logic Optimization This is a exclusive topic um, only for um, this project and it is declassified information one of the biggest concepts during the development of system philosophy was the question whether or not my philosophy will live on unchanged until the end of time for the entire philosophical progression of humanity. Basically, whether or not if my philosophy will be immortal over time and over time and changes that humanity will undergo in the future. So much that if the world were to get conquered by aliens, would my philosophy cross culture so much that it will be accepted even by aliens? But of course, it is an exaggeration joke. When I was talking about whether or not alien was uh, will accept my philosophy, yeah, it's a joke. Um, one of the elements that I look at um, was the cap capability of human logic. Whether or not human currently and the future projection of human logic will suppress my current research and render it obsolete. But it turns out the group, the growth of cap capability of human logic does not improve philosophical research directly to make a significant argument. And looking at countless ancient philosophies that are, uh, that are hundreds to thousands of years old, I have to conclude that philosophy itself is default extremely time elastic. However, I cannot rely on the default time elastic elast 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 that see it's this fucking problem look my english uh, my, my my writing is, is very um is you know up to tear but the way i speak is so uh weird i cannot say these words even though i can't write these words anyways I cannot rely on default time elasticity that philosophy itself provides. So I introduce a quote during the development of system philosophy. The warning is that this quote is extremely dense and filled with hidden meanings that you will have to spend a lot of time grinding through to know what it truly means. Okay, the quote is, there are and never will be a period in the end of any system philosophy. This quote is especially deep that there are two reasons that I want you to think about deeply and these two reasons are just declassified um, this year. So you should like, really appreciate this information because this is core information that you don't learn in any philosophy class. First, uh, first reason is uh, the, f the quote hints that, wait a sec, um, the quote hints that system philosophy is a philosophy that grows in reader's mind after you have read it. Therefore, there will never be a period in any of the system philosophy. Second reason, is the biggest reason being a breakthrough of system philosophy itself. That is, system philosophy is the very first philosophy to maximize knowledge generation and exception handling after you have read it all on your own instead of getting it from text, from, from the text. Um, this self-improving and personalized logic within system philosophy makes it to last through time person to person, society to society, revolution to revolution, until the end of time. Also, it's more than just lasting through time. 
it is also the first philosophy to circle on around to yourself on the most personal scale. This kind of philosophy that is straight out from readers' mind, filled with all the filled with others' personal own opinions that you can never relate as your own form of knowledge. What it means is basically system philosophy. Once you learn system philosophy, you are generating information that makes system philosophy to be your personal philosophy that you can relate to as yourself. Well, other people's philosophy is just contains too much declaration from the author that um, pretty much useless, pretty much just opinions that you cannot use. This is、um, extremely important because, like, I I don't know how to say this, but、um, this is such a complex concept that I'm using it even right now to you, to teaching you that concept. But it's really hard for me to explain because、uh, it's, it's, this this concept is so delicate that I have no words to describe it unless I'm gonna. Add、uh, abstract to it,、uh, abstractness to it, and I don't want abstractness to it. Anyway, back to the point. This concept by itself answered one of the biggest、um, philosophy doubt there is, which is whether or not philosophy can stand up to the quote one system infinite solutions. Means there can never be a book of infinite questions. Basically, there can never be a book of infinite questions and answers. However, a concept system can take in infinite amount of questions, and in return, provide infinite amount of answers. What it means is basically, I cannot write a book with the answers infinite of amount of questions with infinite of amount of answers. However, what I can do is I give you a conceptual system that can take in infinite of questions, but in return, you yourself will generate infinite amount of answers. So basically, you yourself is becoming a part of system philosophy. You yourself is answering your own questions using your thinking through the use of system philosophy. This is extremely, extremely important to understand. I don't know how to emphasize、um, this concept. Look through my voice. You can yeah, sometimes、um, you cannot feel the importance, but I don't know how can I make it more important. Ah,、oh, damn it! I don't know what should I do. If you care about it, this is、uh, this is extremely important, and there is no other. Quotes that describe it better. So basically, this is a end of exclusive topic. You have to think about it、um, on your own, for most part,、um, to understand the true meaning of it. However, I did like to、uh, talk about one of the side example of this、uh, logic optimization in modern computers、uh, as an example. Because they share some common characteristic, but not to be confused、um, with each other. Oftentimes, I like to refer human brain as the computer's、um, central processing unit, which is CPU, where、um, both does logic processing. However, computer is not capable of generating logic on its own, unlike human.、Uh, we could actually.、Um, Learn more logic to process information. You know, you can learn ways to process information.、Uh, this ability to learn new ways to process information within a principle, with a principle, not within a principle, with a principle, such as system philosophy, is essential to human logic. Basically, it literally means the perfection of the principle means the perfection of the information. Processed, which makes the principle extremely important. How it applies is,、um, if you have a flawed philosophy, so your 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 intake of information 
of senses is gonna be flawed. It's it's not gonna be perfect. However, if you have a flawless, uh, conceptually flawless principle such as system philosophy, the intake of information will be processed flawlessly. Therefore, you get knowledge that is flawless. But I wouldn't say flawless, you know. And, oh my God, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's flawless. There are uh, complexity to it. You have to learn in the future character. Uh, <laughs> chapters. But also the support of the principle to allow human to maximize the usage of the ability to process information, uh, to process infinite possibilities of information determines whether or not the principle will become the ultimate logic. Hold on, let me think. Yeah, you all have to pause through that because I, uh, I wrote this a few days ago. So you all have to uh, pause it to understand. I'm not going to go over it. So you all have to go over it, uh, read it word by word to figure out what it means. Note, uh, I'm using the word principle on this particular example, but you can replace the word principle with the word philosophy for better understanding. So this concludes part five.